I wanted to revisit an old Python project. This is the Colat sequence problem from the programming book Automate the Boring Stuff. Last time I solved this using a while loop and some conditional statements, this time I wanted to approach it in a recursive way. Recursion is where you have a function that calls itself. Just quickly I'll recap what the Colat sequence is. The Colat sequence is a series of mathematical operations that you can do to any positive integer and you'll eventually reach one. What you do is input a number, if it's even divide it by two, if it's odd multiply it by three and add one and you take the result and do the same again and again until you reach one. I'll give an example. Say we input 10, that's even, so we divide it by 2 and get 5. 5 is odd, so we multiply by 3 and add 1, giving 16. 16 is even, divide by 2. 8 is even, divide by 2. 4 is even, divide by 2. 2 is even, and finally we arrive at 1. And this works for any whole number greater than 0, we always arrive at 1. I'll start with the recursive function. We will pass it the number that we're doing the Colat sequence on and a steps variable that we'll use to keep track of how many steps it took to get to one. With recursion, it's very easy to get stuck in an endless loop calling the function over and over again. So the first thing that I like to think about is what is the condition that will break out of the recursive loop? For us, this is when number equals 1. Our three possible conditions are number equals 1, which means we're done. Number doesn't equal 1 and is even. Remainder of number divided by 2 is 0. or number doesn't equal 1 and is odd. Remainder of number divided by 2 is 1. So when number equals 1, we can just return steps and number. Nice and simple. And we should print out how many steps the sequence took. But when number's even, we don't return a number. What we return is the Colat's function of our number divided by 2. And when number's odd, we call the Colat's function, and this time multiply by 3 and add 1. For example, if we pass the number 3 to our function, it's not 1, and it is odd, so this part of the code will execute. It will return the colats of number, which is 3 in this example, times 3 plus 1, which is colats of 10. So now we're back up here, but number equals 10. 10 is even, so it returns colats of 10 divided by 2, 5, and so on through the colats function over and over again until it reaches 1. So you can see how the function will keep executing itself over and over. That's why it's so important to think about the break condition first and make sure it'll always eventually happen. So this is the recursive part done, but we need to display something to the user so that we can see it working. Every time the function's called, I'm gonna print the number and we should increment the steps counter. 
And I'm just gonna add a catch-all in case something goes wrong. Now we just need to take user input to get the number. and call the callouts function on that number. We should initialize the steps counter to zero. Great, let's give it a test run. I'll type in three. Great, we can see we got the same output as the textbook. I'll just count the steps. Seven. So it looks like the code got this part wrong. Oh yeah, we're double counting when number equals one. We increment steps, but we don't actually do anything to the number. So we just need to subtract one before displaying steps to the user. All of the numbers popped up at once, so I'll add a small delay. This will just make it easier to see what's going on with the function. Let's run it again. Cool, that's better. We got seven steps this time, which is correct. Now I'll just put this inside a while loop so that we don't have to keep running the program over and over again every time we want to test the callout sequence on a new number. Again, the first thing I like to think about when dealing with an endless loop is the condition that should break out of the loop. So this time we'll break out of the loop if the user types esc. Now it's good practice to have a main function and call it from if name equals main. So we'll do that. Now let's run the code. We will test it with three again. Great, looks like I didn't break anything. And let's do that really long number from last time, 871. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> This was a recursive approach to the callout sequence problem from Automate the Boring Stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave any questions or thoughts below in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. <laughs> that was 178 steps apparently. Bye.